I mean, you got to let it pause. No, it said three down. You did? I did. I was like, just give it a moment. No, nope. no. Nope. Got super now, excited. Now we are. Now, now we, we're live. No, we weren't we, before. We were live before. Babe, we weren't. So say good morning again. Good morning, everyone. Now For we're the live. Second time. It's okay. Can you say good morning to me, guys? No. I know there were Maybe. a few people a couple of weeks ago that, that jumped on right at 8 o'clock and we weren't there. And mm -hmm. so they missed it because they thought maybe we weren't going to do it. And if you'll notice, um, we are now back to the normal sitting position where Lisa is, is in charge and um, controlling the whole I'm Facebook. I'm in charge. <laughs> it didn't work really well when Dennis took over the keyboard. It didn't, it didn't work at all, actually. No, no. it was kind of sad. It was sad. It got us on, and then it got us off, and then it got us on. So make sure you say good morning to us so we know that you're with us this morning. Um, I do have a question. What's wrong? Okay. Shoot. What were you looking at? I you was like, looking at you. Went my my, face. I, you put your, I was just looking. <laughs> do you know that I've been up since 425 this morning? I do know that. Do you know how I know that? Because I heard you slam our dresser door. No, no, take that back. I heard you shut our dresser yes, door. Yes, they're noisy. I didn't mean to. Yeah. I was just getting a pair of socks. So I've been up that long, too. About that long? About that long. Okay, so the question is, would you rather travel? Would you rather travel by A, car, B, train, C, bus? What kind of car? No. Nope. That makes a difference. Nope, it doesn't. You got to choose one or the other. A car. A car, no, car. B train, car. C bus. Car. Hands down? Yeah. Have you ever been on a train? No. Well, <laughs> yes. I mean, in New York, I've been on a That's subway. That's a subway. That's not a... Okay. We call it a train. Okay. And a bus? Have you ever ridden on a bus? I grew up in New York. I took a bus to school every day. Wow. This is the difference between him and me. I grew up in Lima, so I'm thinking bus like a Greyhound, and I'm thinking train like Amtrak. He grew up in New York City, so he's thinking train, subway, mm -hmm. and bus, city, city transportation. Bus, yeah. You did take a bus when you went to just play basketball, and even when you went to school, you me, took a bus in beeping? high school. I'm going to turn my phone off. I didn't hear anything beeping. Yeah. So, yeah, so car, because then I can be in control. It is a control issue. I, so it wouldn't really matter what mode of transportation we picked. You would still just pick car because that's the one you could be in control of. Correct. Unless you got to drive the bus. Yeah. Like that movie Speed where you can't go below like a shirt. Ooh, that's frightening. Um, no, definitely a car or a motorcycle. Okay. Mm -hmm. So no plane. I can't fly a plane. I mean, I could fly it into the ground, but I... You wouldn't fly. want to travel by plane? I don't mind tra traveling by plane, but yeah, I'd still want to drive if I could. Mm -hmm. Like those trips you made to Texas? Yeah. I don't mind driving those. You don't? No. I'd, I'd rather fly those trips to Texas so that I can stay longer. What would you rather do? Travel by car A, train B, or bus C? And then I threw plane in there because there's a lot of plane flying, except now they are getting super expensive. So yeah, they are. Tickets. So, yes, um, thanks for joining us this morning or at some point today, if you choose to sit with us, if you choose to stop your scrolling long enough and stay. I have my coffee cup with my French press, which I thought was kind of funny because as I was pouring the coffee in it, I was like, I really should be using the new coffee mug that we just got in the mail, Living Deeper Still. And um, instead, I have pins in it and I don't have coffee in it. But it does work really well. It holds really well. That's what Eric did yesterday. He held it in all the different ways that he could hold it and said, it's a good mug, Mom. There you go. So I am very particular that's about my coffee year old mugs. Test. Yeah, that's a 23. Hey, Levi, how you doing? It's hey. good to see you. He's back in Ohio, the land Welcome of the back. Buckeyes. Yeah. So missed Dennis, you yesterday. Yeah, you did. Mm -hmm. Dennis and I have been studying together, not together, separately, we're studying in two different groups, Psalm 23. And we have been having conversations, outside conversations together with each other about Psalm 23. And so we thought we would spend the two Mondays in June in Psalm 23 and just divide it in half 
the way that it is, the way that we're studying it. Okay. But we were curious, um, we had some questions and we were throwing some thoughts out even last night as we took a stroll around the neighborhood. Hmm. What your... I thought about that today. Just take the stroll. <laughs> and just the difference between how we... Like, okay, so when we go out and we do you a totally, walk... You totally wouldn't. I know. <laughs> Uh, just because I was <laughs> up since 4.30 this morning, and I, I think about stupid stuff. Um, but I was thinking What did of, you think about our stroll last night? Well, we can get into that, but I was thinking about how the difference is. And I wondered if people under, know the difference between, like, a brisk walk or a stroll, and in, in Lisa's world... We did not brisk walk last I night. I know, because I have to clarify these things before we actually step out the door, because for her... A, a careful, walk. Careful. Okay. For her, a walk is, and I thought about this. It's like a, a mother gazelle. I mean, <laughs> in the savanna <laughs> desert, being chased by a lion. We're just in Beaver like, Creek, and we went she, for a stroll. No, but when you walk, you walk so fast, and it's it's just oh, like I'm not this. Not waking you up early this anymore, race. honey. And I thought, what? So what is it like for me if she's a a mother gazelle running from a lion. I thought, really, I'm like that that newborn gazelle I can't take that, it. that looks down at, at these appendages and they're like, I have no idea what these and things are for. They're kind of falling and they're, underneath Yeah, and so you go about 100 feet and you collapse, dead tired, and you look at the lion. You go, yeah, just go ahead. I can't. I'm, just I'm eat done. Me. Just eat me. I'm done. That 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 was our stroll is, last night. I'm why, so sorry you had to participate. This is in that. why I don't get up at 4:30 in the morning because I think about those things. Is, but we were just talking about Psalm 23, and you moved right in the middle of it. I know. Like, that I was know. awesome. Sorry. That's and so I will say that when I asked him if he wanted to take a walk with me last night, he just sat there and looked at me. And then what did you say? Are we taking a stroll? Yeah, I think you rephrased it. Are we taking a stroll? Or I asked if we were going on a stroll because I know that he doesn't want to walk with me. Yeah. So. So that was just a random thought. By it Dennis. was. But it's not really because Psalm 23 talks about he makes me lie down, he leads me beside still waters, and you do think of. There's a book that I'm also reading with a friend of mine called um, Hind's Feet on High Places. I don't know if you've ever read that. And so no, it does. It. Yeah, it does. It does fold into all of those concepts and those thoughts as far as walking and even the. T- the, the Monday night Bible study that I'm leading online with a large community of women, we talked about walking through Colossians and whether we're strolling or we're walking or we're hiking or we're trekking mm-hmm. through Colossians and just consciously being aware of our gait. And, and it was really neat, honestly, because one woman brought into my, my mindset that I hadn't thought of that Typically, if we typically trek through God's word, meaning we dig deep, we do the word studies, maybe these four weeks in Colossians are a time for us to stroll. Which means you, when you stroll, you notice every tree when we're walking. I do. That's and you true. and you have gentle conversations about it. You that's notice true. the flowers and you notice the concrete driveways. And so may, this gal said to me, maybe this isn't a season to trek. Maybe you need to go back and you need to just stroll through God's word, through Colossians, and just enjoy what you see and allow it to kind of just slowly soak into your being. Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about it like that. I thanked her for pointing me because I'm deeper still ministries, usually typically going deeper still. But if you are somebody who goes deeper still, it may be time for you to take this is... um, I have the New Living Translation, and I say that this is this is the one I use when I'm when I'm going to have a conversation with God, not when I'm going to trek, but more when I'm going to stroll. And I just sit with Him and I read it, and it's the New Living, so it's just a little bit easier for me to to read through. So, but totally not how I think to do Psalm 23. But Absolutely no, none. I just I went there though. But the whole strolling, walking, these, hiking, trekking. It's very random thoughts. And look at people are still with us. Isn't that great that they stay? <laughs> That. Yeah. So Psalm 23, we're Go going to read, read it. it. Please. You want me to read it? Well, you have it open. So. I do. I have it open in a collection of translations. Do you want me to read it in one particular one? Surprise us. All Surprise of us. us. Yes. 
Okay, well, I'm going to surprise you then, and I'm going to read from the message. Oh, uh, okay. okay. That's fine. You can't discount. I know. Go ahead. Do you want to read from your ESP? No. Okay. No. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. Who's writing Psalm 23? David. Okay. Was he a shepherd when he wrote it? No, he was a king who had been a shepherd. Okay. Is it, wasn't he shepherding when God found him? Went yes. after him, pursued him, claimed him as king? Yes. Yeah. Okay. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid when you walk at my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brim, brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. This is the word of the Lord. Well, that's the message. I'm sorry. We're not going to get on. We're not going there this morning. What are your first thoughts, honey? I know that you've been studying okay. it a lot, so it's going to be yeah. hard for you to separate first thoughts, first impressions, because yeah. you've already gone kind of deep. Yeah. But just thinking about where you first were when you started reading it and studying it, do you have anything? Well, it, I mean, it is it is a psalm of hope. Um, you know, David, in as he writes this, is using an is coming to it from an understanding that he has deep knowledge of, which is as a shepherd. And he's applying those truths that he knows mm. to his relationship with the Lord. Mm. And and so it's it really is a beautiful thing mm. as you kind of reflect on that. I think the question is, how do we take this psalm that was a very personal psalm for David and then apply it to our own lives. And it definitely is. There's there's a lot of hope in it, a lot of promise in it, which is why it's it's used so often in times of struggle, mm. um, funerals, um, you know, for, and, and I read something by Spurgeon, and I'm going to read something from him later, but just talking about how it's probably the most widely known, widely most read, um, scripture in ever 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 um hmm. so yeah i mean that's kind of that first overall thought of it i thought that like even when you were talking and you said it's a very personal psalm the challenge is how do we take something that was so personal to david and bring it into our life mm -hmm. for application but immediately being a woman and holding my coffee cup i oftentimes can go out with a another woman and I can sit and drink coffee for three hours and I'll come home and you'll be like what did you do for three hours but to me that's like we're sharing our personal stories we're sharing what God is doing in our lives and who he is and where we've seen him so it's I would say that that's one of the first things I look at is that this is personal and this is from David and I hear what he's saying and then I long for it for myself mm -hmm. I don't need no, to be fair. a shepherd or understand even the intricacies of shepherding to understand what David is saying and saying, I can hear your passion and your and your close walk with the shepherd and I want that too. Right. Yeah. Just if we just this week, if we just take some some minutes to just look at verses one, two, and three. Um, why don't you read it from the the ESV right there? Okay. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So what do you see there? What are your, what are your first thoughts just with those three verses? Well, so when we were on our stroll yesterday and if you miss the whole discussion about the stroll you need to yeah. rewind go back um as we were on our stroll yesterday 
we were talking about this, and and to me, um, in order for me to really get an application out of this, it starts with the first five words of this song, which is, the Lord is my shepherd. And the importance of that declaration. Um, and it, it's, it's interesting, because oftentimes when you do a translation comparison, which is what I've done on this with the four translations, I did the ESV first, then the NLT, and then the message, and then the Amplified, you, typically you will have some verbiage change, some word change. But the only word that changed across the way in all four was the Lord, and in the message they said God. But everything else is the same. Is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. There was no verbiage change. Well, and it, again, going back to the Old Testament, the Lord there is the word Yahweh, which is the most important sacred name that the Jews had for God. Mm -hmm. um, it was the personal name that was given to um, Moses, I believe. I believe um, and Mo Moses wasn't given that name no okay I just want to God said to that this is who I am yes I am who I am who, who I, I am, am. Um, and and so David is saying the Almighty God God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob creator God infinite God that this Lord is my shepherd. Mm. And, and he understood what it meant to be a sheep and how utterly dependent we have to be on the Lord and then to give over full control mm. to the Lord. I was, it's funny that you said that you went right to sheep because as you were talking, I was thinking he knew what a shepherd was because he was a shepherd. Right. So he knew what it meant to say, the Lord is my shepherd, right. because he understood what a shepherd does. I didn't right. even think about the sheep part. I just thought about the shepherd. Like he was declaring that God is my shepherd, and I know what that means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, because he knew what that meant, he could go through then the rest, the second half well, of verse 1, 2, and then 3. And in, in Don't worry. He's not going to read all I'm that. I'm not going to read all this. Um, but in 1 Samuel, David says this to King Saul when he was he he came to the battlefield and Goliath was there. He said, but David said to Saul, your servant was tending his father's sheep when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock. I went out after him and attacked him and rescued it from his mouth. And when he rose up against me, I seized him by his beard and struck him and killed him. And so mm -hmm. when David's talking about the Lord being his shepherd, he's understanding that when he was a shepherd, he did whatever it took to protect his sheep to the point that he would go and do battle with the, with the lion and the bear mm -hmm. and was able to, to kill the lion and the bear and rescue the lamb from the mouth of the lion. And so his perspective is so intimate with who the Lord is. And I think it's so important that we have that same attitude, that same understanding of who the Lord is as our shepherd. It's Go ahead. as a sheep. And yeah. I just think it's, I can't, my mind is all a twist with other scriptures that support this scripture. Right. And in the comments, if you have any other scriptures that support this scripture, put it in there. If there's one that pops up, I have just a list, and that was part of our conversation on the stroll yesterday, was you can't just stay here because there's so many other scriptures that talk about God as our shepherd, David the shepherd, um, the shepherds that that the star and the angel came to mm -hmm. and Jesus as the good shepherd in John four. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and we're going to go through even in verse two, where it says he, 
he leads me beside the still and restful waters, immediately it makes me think of where Jesus is at the well with the woman from the Samaritan woman and and he is the living water. And he's like, if you would just take me, you'll never thirst again. And so it's hmm. David taking the roles of a shepherd, but magnifying it to the point of an omniscient, omnipresent, all-knowing God, who is the ultimate shepherd, who at that time in the Old Testament, Jesus was there. There are three in one, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. And so Dennis and I were just talking about how you have to cross over and, and take what David's saying, but even just this morning, sitting and thinking about the importance of David's declaration mm -hmm. and saying, in the Amplified, I use that a lot just to, to pull in, in more thoughts, more words. It says, the Lord is my shepherd to feed, to guide, and to shield me. Well, I, okay, so I, I will take it in a different direction as well. When I, when I was really contemplating this and thinking it through, this declaration, how important it is to say that the Lord is my shepherd, and then to release our our will. Um, Spurgeon says this. Um, Spurgeon says, Charles Spurgeon says that before a man can truly say the Lord is my shepherd, he must first feel himself to be a sheep by nature. Mm. For he cannot know that God is his shepherd unless he feels in himself that he has the nature of a sheep. He must relate to a sheep in its foolishness, its, dis its dependency, and in the warped nature of its will. So he needs to know his need right. for a shepherd and, and as a sheep. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. That's. I mean, that's really significant because it's not just saying... The Lord is my shepherd, and I actually, one of the women that I'm studying with shared that she she memorizes as a youth, and she memorized it in the sense of how fast can you say it, and so that you think about how fast those five words came out of her mouth and how fast they were gone, right. and, and not sitting and lingering and savoring and processing what it means that the Lord is my shepherd, therefore I recognize my need as a sheep for a shepherd. Yeah. Um. Mm. Keep talking because I have something else I wanted to. <laughs> well, I just, I think it's, I really do think it's astounding because it says, God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. And why don't you need a thing? If you think about the sheep as a flock together, they don't have any worries or concerns or needs be, for their needs because they know the shepherd will care for them. They have put their trust and maybe it's because they're foolish as I said last week, that um, all I know about sheep is that they're dumb, so I need a shepherd. And um, and it's because I, and even if I have any smarts in me, I think that, that I can take care of myself, but I still need a shepherd. And we choose different things to shepherd us. Correct. But David is saying that Yahweh is my shepherd. Correct. And the beautiful thing for me, being an English teacher by trade, is that in the Amplified, shepherd is capitalized, which I think is so important because it shows a correlation to Yahweh. What did you find where you wanted to go? I did. Um, and, and this might, this is one of those verses in the New Testament that you go, whoa. Um, as you think and reflect on verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, right? And we make that declaration, but we do we really mean it? Hmm. Right? Is hmm. it really where we stand with the Lord? Or are they just words that we recite? To your point of your friend, how fast can I say it? Right. And in Matthew seven, twenty one through twenty three, these are these are difficult words to to read. But Jesus says this not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. It is so important that we fully submit to the authority of Yahweh. 
and to the authority of Christ. Mm -hmm. That we not pretend, that we not fake it, that we not just simply say it, but to do it, to be obedient to the words of Christ. In Luke 6, Jesus says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? Well, and Jesus speaks to those who are his sheep and right. how he knows those who are his sheep. And it, there was an interesting story in that in that book that we're reading by Keller, um, William Keller, I think. Yeah, it's right there on the top of the... Right. Um, and he shared the story as that he was a shepherd for eight years. He had a flock of sheep mm -hmm. that he cared for. And he had one particular sheep that kept getting out from the pen, would find a way out, would... Um, would totally not be obedient to the shepherd and ultimately was leading other sheep to exit the pen mm, yeah. through holes in the fences that are under the, under the fence and ways that this sheep was able to manage. And eventually Keller, to be able to keep the rest of the flock safe, he ended up having to kill that that one, one sheep. that one sheep because of how disobedient it had mm. been and again the parallel of of the importance of us being obedient to Yahweh mm. obedient to Christ in everything that we do fully submit as a sheep would to a shepherd mm. acknowledging that everything that I need you can provide and you will provide for me um, and just recognizing that and Honestly, I didn't get any further than the first five words, and I'm you like, didn't. "Wow, that is just so." Important. But if you, but if if we encourage those who are watching this morning just to read verses one, two, and three, the um, it specifically says in verses two and three why the Lord is my shepherd; I have all that I need. Mm -hmm. And then in two and three, it's like David makes a declaration about the shepherd. And I just said to you this morning as I was reading at First Impressions that 4, 5, and 6 then go to turn, and it turns very personal where David is actually talking to the shepherd because he changes from he to the pronoun you. And so just read that and sit with it and think about why verse 1 is true with, with no hesitation. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength, and he guides me along the right paths, bringing honor to his name. Just thinking about those things. The Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. And you can do almost a checklist, an inventory, an accountability, and say, if I say the Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. Is it because he lets me rest in green meadows? Is it because he leads me beside peaceful streams? Is it because he renews my strength? And is it because he guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name? Or are there other things in this world that are filling those needs? Mm -hmm. And if indeed other things in this world are filling those needs, he is not your shepherd. Right. And you don't have all you need, and you will always come up short. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thanks for joining us this morning as we just, um, it's almost like we just tipped our toes in Psalm 23. And I hope that you will be um, impacted or inspired to even share this video on your Facebook page. Psalm 23, what did you say? It is the most widely known, read, Probably known, quoted, read, memorized, quoted, memorized, hung in homes. Psalm 23. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you don't even have to be... You don't have to know anything else about the scripture, you don't but have to be his Psalm sheep. 23 is one that you probably have heard. And you said it was a psalm of hope. I think, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's great yeah. hope in it. Um, yeah. So pass this on. Pass it on today. Pass it on tomorrow whenever you're sitting to watch us. I hope that you had a giggle or two as Dennis and I worked through our issues with whether or not we're strolling Live or walking. on camera. Yeah. <laughs> or hiking or trekking. But, um, Den, would you just pray over whomever's watching, Absolutely. as God knows and he sees them. For sure. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Um, and Lord, I, I, I don't say that flippantly. 
we do thank you. We thank you for the very breath that we have. We thank you for the gifts that you've given us in life and in salvation through Jesus. Um, Father, that alone is the only gift we really need, and you have provided it for us. Thank mm -hmm. you for that, Lord. Thank you for the hope that we have because of, of what Christ did on the cross. Thank you for the truth of mm -hmm. your word. Thank you for King David and mm -hmm. his willingness to to not only follow you and honor you, but also write mm -hmm. and give us these mm -hmm. words that can remind us the, the truth of who you are. Father, I pray that um, that we truly today would would seek to make you our shepherd, mm -hmm. to release and relinquish our own will, our own desires, uh, and Father, give them over to you and truly, truly mm -hmm. make mm -hmm. you our Lord. And it is in the precious name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus that I pray. Amen. 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 Have a blessed day. Bye, everyone. <laughs>